I've been playing video games for about 16 years of my life, and in that time, various games have made a lasting impression on me and helped me shape the type of games I would end up enjoying today. Starting from the Super Nintendo all the way to now, many games have come and gone, but these 10 have affected me the most throughout the years. Honorable mentions go out to Super Mario Sunshine, Pokemon Snap, Pokemon Crystal, and Custom Robo. And with that out of the way, here's the top 10 games from my childhood. I'm not sure what it is, but Pikmin has always had a certain charm to it for me. From the areas, to the music, to the little Pikmin themselves, it's hard not to have a smile on your face while sitting back and leading your little army of Pikmin around. Pikmin is a fantastic, if somewhat short, game to just pick up and play for a while. Easy to play, but with some surprising challenge here and there, Pikmin is a fantastic experience I think everyone should try at least once. Who knew farming could be so enjoyable? Harvest Moon A Wonderful Life for the GameCube had me sitting in front of my TV watering pots for hours. Meeting with the locals, digging for artifacts, fishing, hanging out at the bar, giving your potential sweetheart gifts. There's so much to do. This game is just so relaxing with great music and a very nice atmosphere. Pick your crops, milk your cows, lose your chickens in the field, sit back and have a wonderful life. Shitty voice acting aside, something about Bait and Kaito's Eternal Wings in the Lost Ocean resonated with me as a kid. Maybe it was the art style, maybe it was the setting, maybe it was because it was one of the first JRPGs I've ever played, but this cult classic made a major impression on me. As an adult, I feel like I would now have a better understanding of the story and lore and what drove these characters. The beautiful locations and the interesting choice of camera perspective has my curiosity peaked for what's to come. Bait and Kaitos is a game I definitely regret putting down as a kid, and hopefully I can get my hands on a copy someday to right the wrong of having never beaten it. Oh god, when it comes to getting upset and yelling at my TV, Super Smash Bros. Melee probably tops my list, and I've played Dark Souls. As frustrating as it may have been, Melee was a game to play when friends or family would visit, and it was always a good time. Pikachu, Link, Captain Falcon, and Gandalf were my go-to characters, although admittedly I was never really good with any of them. I spent so much time trying to unlock Falco and Gandalf, I still remember studying the guide to make sure I did it right, and the frustration from when I would fail. Over the years I somehow got even worse at Melee, but still always a guaranteed good time when hanging out with friends. Mega Man X5 for the PlayStation is an unfortunately looked over title, my personal favorite in the X series, and one of the first Mega Man games I've ever played. It also introduced me to one of my favorite video game characters in Zero. The awesome music and the hard but fun gameplay alone were enough to make a huge impression on me, but the wonderful environments and unique bosses are just the icing on the cake of this fantastic game. If you were a Pokemon fan when Pokemon Stadium came out, you were probably massively hyped. I know I was. All 151 Pokemon in 3D to battle with friends, what more could you ask for? Not to mention all the fantastic minigames. Pokemon Stadium has hours upon hours of fun to be had, alone or with friends. And while I've come to enjoy the sequel more than the original nowadays, I never owned or played much of Stadium 2 as a kid, so the original takes my number 5 spot on this list. Good fucking lord, I love this game. The exploration, the music, the atmosphere, the entire journey. It's all so fucking good. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is definitely somewhere in my top 10 favorite games of all time. In Crystal Chronicles, you start out as one of four races sent on a journey to restore your town's protective crystal to fend off the deadly miasma. You set off to collect dewdrops from a number of trees by exploring areas and fighting bosses. The gameplay is great, the environments are beautiful, and the world is so well crafted, I would recommend this game to anyone in a second. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles an absolute classic. The game with possibly the most personal memories attached to it on this list, Killer Instinct for the Super Nintendo was always a must-play whenever I would visit my cousin and father out of town. My dad never took it easy on us and would demolish us with full gore or thunder, but it was always a great time trying to beat him. I often used Jago and my cousin preferred Spinal, and we'd often play against each other, but the most fun was always challenging my dad and then getting ultra in mere minutes.
damn near perfect is how I would describe Tales of Symphonia. A JRPG I got on a whim as a kid, it may not look like it would hold up very well, but if you set aside what you're used to with modern gaming and look past the graphics, you get very fluid gameplay, an interesting if somewhat cheesy story, and relatable if a bit annoying characters. As a kid I got about halfway through disc 1 when I eventually lost interest and moved on to other things, but many years later I would set out to finish the game I abandoned back then and two years ago I did just that. Going through the entire game and only dying twice, the experience was awesome if a bit frustrating due to the tricky nature of some dungeons. A classic in my opinion, Tales of Symphonia is a damn good time if you're a JRPG lover and even if you're not, just give it a shot. It's on Steam. I mean, why not? I fucking love Streets of Rage. The addicting beat the shit out of everyone gameplay, the awesome 16-bit graphics, accidentally punching your friends in the face in co-op, and last but not least, the absolutely fucking outstanding Yuzo Koshiro soundtrack. This game is Sega at its best. I actually still own the game on the Sega 6-pack cartridge which also includes Sonic, Golden Axe, Revenge of Shinobi, Columns, and Super Hang-On. The time my cousin and I would spend playing Streets of Rage is a very vivid memory for me, and this game still holds up. My friend Asian Wiggle and I still boot up Streets of of Rage and Streets of Rage 2 every now and then for some co-op beat em up fun. Lasting just enough time to not overstay its welcome, Streets of Rage is a brief but insanely fun experience, with music that's guaranteed to get stuck in your head. I may not have played Streets of Rage a whole lot as a kid, but the time I did spend with it is still remembered fondly to this day. Streets of Rage, an absolute classic. Well, that was my list. I know it's a bit all over the place. I may not have been playing video games for that long. I missed out on a lot of classic Super Nintendo games. These games pretty much shaped my childhood and the games I would come to enjoy today. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and leave your childhood games in the comments if you would like to. But thank you for watching. It's been Cleveland Kelly Ryder, and I will see you all next time.